throat rips, monster trucks, bar fights, and pleated pants. We saw Roadhouse, so you know what that means. Now it's time for how did this campaign? We're gonna have a good time, celebrate some failure, not just be a hater. Did you know you wonder? How did this campaign? Let's wallow in the mediocrity of subpar art. Perhaps we'll find the answer to the question, how did this get made? Hello, people of Earth, and welcome to How Did This Get Made Live! We are in Seattle at Bumbershoot. And man, oh man, we have an amazing movie today. But first, let's welcome uh, my two co-hosts. Please welcome Jason Van Zoukas. <laughs> All right. June Diane Raphael. And our very special guest, the first returning guest on How Did This Get Made, Doug Benson. All right. Here we go. What's up, jerks? This, this movie, wow. I, I haven't seen it in a long time, Roadhouse, and it is, it's amazing. This it movie is, is fucking fantastic. Yeah. It's quite good. It's, I think it's probably the best, like the best B movie there is, and there's so much insane stuff in it. Like it's a mainstream movie, but it's insane. Just when the movie starts to slow down, I feel like shit happens that is just like, oh, we're gonna drive a monster truck through a car shop right yeah. now? All right, cool. You know a movie's good when in the first three minutes a woman is ge- being kicked in the pussy. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's a right crazy moment, away. too, because she calls in the, one of the first scenes in the movie. She calls a guy who she's with at a bar an asshole, and then he kicks her off a stool. She stabs him first. <laughs> she stabs no, him first. No, she didn't stab him. Yeah, she, she stabs stab. the money. She, he, she, she stabbed says, the money. She says she, said what, she was worth. Yeah, 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 sorry, you're right. He gives her a hundred bucks. Bo- this is also an era where everybody's carrying hundred dollar bills, <laughs> like, inexplicably like, here's a hundred dollar bill. She stabs it. He kicks her in the fucking pussy. <laughs> Every single person in this movie carries a knife. It's yeah. as if there is no such thing as guns. Yes. It, it really is like, well, I've got my knife that's strapped to my leg, or I've yeah. got my knife over here. Everybody's got knives. And the it, knives are super big, like almost comically, and the guns are tiny. Yeah, <laughs> <They're> <laughs> that's like true. The knives per capita in this city, uh, in this little outskirts of Kansas City. Where are they in again? I forget the name of the town. Oh, oh Jasper. Jasper, yeah. <laughs> Good old Jasper. Good old Jasper. <laughs> but it starts that first first fight with the $100 bill is in New York, right? That's his first bar, isn't it? No, he's not in New York anymore, right? Isn't, I thought his car is just New York plates. Where's went, the first bar that he's at? The place where, what's his name, finds him and is like, I know who you are. I think it's undisclosed. It's just in a, it's another... somewhere else. It's the city, though. Yeah. yeah. I do think the movie starts off very boldly because you start off, you know, Patrick Swayze is being watched as he's being a cooler, which is not a bouncer. This is a guy above the bouncers. Coolers. Well, Paul, you don't have to explain it because everybody knows what a cooler is, right? <laughs> Was William H. Macy a cooler in that movie, The Cooler? That's a different kind of no, cooler. No, that's a, yeah. Patrick Swayze doesn't go places and make people's uh, luck change <laughs> while playing cards. He ma- <laughs> he's the uh, uber bouncer. He's the uber bouncer who has three rules, but... It's a bold move to have a fight scene, and the first time you reveal him full, he's wearing like Z Cavaricis. Like, I'm not afraid this. of a bouncer in pleated pants. <laughs> oh, yeah. And he is later in the movie wearing what appears to be like a blousy jeans and a karate gi as a shirt. <laughs> yeah, and he's sexy that karate as gi hell. shirt is pretty amazing. Hell. He is constantly wearing, I'm pretty sure, women's clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Jonah Ray called that uh, karate casual when we, <laughs> when we did a, a live interruption of the movie one time. It, uh, I love that he also is unfazed by being stabbed. Yes. It is, he gets stabbed in the, again, the first five minutes, doesn't even blink, doesn't even question it. Like, oh, all right, here we go. Come outside. <laughs> yeah. like, and it was a bad stab, too. Oh, yeah. But he stitches it up himself because he's a fucking badass. <laughs> he's like... He's like five foot five, a hundred pounds of pure power. He must be sta- he must be standing on like an apple box every scene. <laughs> Kelly Lynch's love interest literally is a giant. He is miniature. 
They hammer him with the I thought you'd be bigger oh, thing. Yeah. Like, they really make a big point out of how small he is. Well, I mean, also, if we're going to talk about, like, the ridiculousness of Patrick Swayze being a bouncer, then Ben Gazzara is the bad guy. Even in this, Ben Gazzara is an old man. Like, he's, like, in his, like, late 40s, early 50s. Like, he's no match for the 20-year-old Patrick Swayze, even in his blousey clothes. <laughs> And, he has and his, his sweatpants. And he has that crazy scene where he's just driving in his caddy, singing along to... I love what's that. he listening to? Like, like Frank a Tony, Sinatra yeah, or like Tony, Tony Bennett? Bennett it's so like, like 80s Richie Rich excess. Yes. Like, I'm so rich, I'm not... <laughs> so I use the whole road. That's how rich <laughs> that's I am. That's how much money I have. And that's like I, I put a disregard. dog on top of the car and I <laughs> use the whole road. <laughs> The way that they show that he's a bad guy in the beginning is that he takes over the whole road. He also has late night parties, like swim parties. Oh, and he rides in a helicopter. He rides in a helicopter. He commutes in a helicopter. Yeah, by the way, commutes to where? To town? Who yeah. knows? Because, town is like because his business appears from? to be uh, yeah, his business appears to be extorting money from the town. Only people. this town. Only, this only town. Jasper, which uh, is it is like a tiny town maybe, in Texas. Yeah, exactly. And he appears to be a multimillionaire by extorting them for protection money. He is like a one man <laughs> mafia for a ghost town because in Texas. Because seriously, how but no, they, but they how only, much money he, could those places really be bringing in? Because he only takes ten percent of like like he only takes ten percent of the auto shop. Like, what? That's like what? Like maybe fifteen, twenty bucks. Maybe, maybe, maybe six people a week come in for wipers Seriously. and oil. <laughs> like oh, nothing. I showed I showed uh, June this. If you watch that scene, I didn't put it here because it doesn't really fit for the podcast. But if you watch a scene where he's getting wipers for Patrick Swayze's character, you can see a prop master handing the wipers oh, that's through. Awesome. It's like literally handing it through the corner of the, the screen. <laughs> Go my back and watch fantastic. that scene. It's my favorite amazing. Ben Gazzara line that establishes he's heavy. He has like a whole speech to Patrick Swayze about how powerful he is. And he goes, JC Penny is coming here because of me. <laughs> what? <laughs> that's your brag? We're that's getting a Walgreens. That's, that's how powerful power. I am. <laughs> you get the max for the minimum at TJ Maxx because of me. KB Toys is rumored to be developing in our town square. <laughs> uh, need I bring up Build-A-Bear? <laughs> <laughs> We're getting two of them. I'm talking to the people at Orange Julius. They're not ready to commit yet. Um, the, the other thing about this small town, besides the fact that he's extorting them and is a rich millionaire, is the fact that uh, there's no cops in this movie. There's no oh. penalties for serious crimes. Such as murder. Yeah. <laughs> Swayze straight up murders a dude. Nothing happens. Nothing. Like, he gets, zero. He gets he, flowers. He rips a dude's throat out. <laughs> zero happens. Uh, let me uh, let me just give you an idea of what the bar fights in this town uh, look like. Obviously, can, Patrick Swayze is recruited to come to this town because this guy has big plans for his bar. Wait, can I just yeah, for one please. second? That guy, wait, it's Kevin Tug, right? Is right. his name? Okay. He's trying to recruit Patrick Swayze, and this is what he says about his bar. It used to be a pretty sweet deal. Now it's the kind of place where they sweep up... Lo- the, now it's the kind of place where they sweep up eyeballs after closing. Yeah. <laughs> Sweep up the eyeballs, man. Plural. Plural. Eyeballs. Oh, I guess it, well, we locked the doors. Let's sweep up the eyeballs. <laughs> Why don't they just have the eyeball club meet somewhere else? <laughs> Guys, stop bringing these eyeballs into the bar. Come on. Uh, your bottles hey. break all the time. Ah, uh, JK, it's just peeled grapes. <laughs> <laughs> They're really good. It's scary for Halloween. All right, so this is, this is a fight that breaks out in the mi- after a man, <laughs> a, a very rich or a man that has a woman with very nice bosoms, uh, he's like, "Hey, you want to feel my girlfriend's breasts for twenty dollars?" Kiss him. He says you can oh, kiss, kiss him kiss for twenty dollars. Guy goes over, gropes her for a little bit of time, and then he's like, "I don't have twenty dollars." And then all <laughs> hell breaks loose. By the way, though, before you play this, Paul, she yeah. seems totally fine with what's oh, happening. Oh, she's guy, totally, yeah. She the guy that happier. is offering it is disgusting. Yeah. Is Gross. covered in sweat and looks like a monster. Also, there's a great line in here, too. I'll, I'll, I'll play this first. Here we go. This is a normal <laughs> night. Oh, <laughs> 
That's a woman. <laughs> this is a normal night. That is a normal night for that bar. <laughs> the most insane fight scene ever. That makes like that just because one man didn't have twenty dollars that broke yeah. out. Immediately. One person immediately. It escalates so quickly too. <laughs> it is like as if everybody is ready to fight, and it's just that one guy pushes the other guy, and then it's like, Rah! yeah, we all have permission. <laughs> Let's go down to the double deuce and wait for fighting. <laughs> there's two little great lines. Throughout this whole movie, there's a lot of ADR where they record the lines after the movie's shot. And one, during a fight scene, guy's like, God damn it, you're ripping my best shirt. <laughs> That's like during a scene where he's getting like pummeled on the ground. <laughs> notice that the music the band's playing is so low yes in this movie like while the band's playing you hear people on the dance floor scream out yeah way louder than the, the music itself the other thing itself. they have is they clearly were like when you guys are talking like the, the woman that's the waitress what's her name baby who, John Cusack baby, yes who is who plays Luke's sister on Gilmore Girls who is um, <laughs> like she's his pal Kathleen kind of. Wilhoit what's that nobody uh. <laughs> She, they were clearly in one scene, they were like, well, we're going to have music and stuff, so talk loud. So she is literally screaming yes. at Patrick Swayze in one scene, even though there is barely no music There's in the scene There's barely music, at all. yeah. She's, She's like, what's your name? <laughs> oh, oh, I heard about you. I She's thought like, you'd be bigger. <laughs> and clearly, that was What did first. you say? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> there's so many great uh, non like bad insult lines. This is, and I wrote this down too. It says, uh, "Girl comes over. She says vodka rocks." Then one of the guys on the spectrum goes, "How about nipple to nipple?" Yeah. And Wait, then I wrote this line. I wrote that line down too. And then she replies, "I can do that myself." <laughs> what? Nope. What are these? Nope, nipple to can't. nipple. <laughs> Get, she you was can't pushing do that. her boobs together. Yeah. Nope. Boom, nipple to nipple. I would like to see that. You do see her tits later. She definitely can't do it. <laughs> well, you see her. Uh, you see her having sex while with the bartender who's on break. And no, no, that's a, that's different, a different girl. girl. Oh, it's a different girl. No, this is this Sorry. is Ben. That's Ben Gazzara's girl, isn't it? Who orders vodka rocks? Isn't yes. it? Oh, you're right. But yeah, that yeah. seems crazy though when Patrick Swayze catches them having sex in the like inventory closet because he opens the door. They're in darkness. They are flooded with light. Yeah. I mean, it's like a spotlight hit them. They keep on fucking for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Just... But there's nothing more sexy in that scene than the, the, than the guy pulling up his tidy whities Oh, yeah. yeah like, oh, <laughs> get these on. And it's so uncomfortable. Uh, but when he's having sex with her, he does say, you're going to be my regular Saturday night thing. <laughs> That's like a sexy thing to say. In Girls the like being called my break. a thing, right? <laughs> He when also you're... says, though, I think to her earlier in that scene when he's at a table with her, man, you're so well put together. <laughs> yeah. What? He goes, then he goes, I get off at two and I'm going to get you off. That guy has a million great lines in this movie. <laughs> I, uh, I got to say, I, I think I do like Ben Gazzara because Ben Gazzara to me, you know, he's rich in this town, but he kind of feels like Richie Rich, like because there is a scene like where he like longingly looks at like um, Patrick Swayze and he's like riding an RV. You ever remember that scene where he's just like riding an RV on his own property? Oh, you like, mean when Patrick Swayze is shirtless in sweatpants doing Tai Chi? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that happens for a long time. A bunch. It happens a bunch. Patrick Swayze is a guy who will read philosophy, do Tai Chi, <laughs> smoke cigarettes. <laughs> that Tai Chi Bare, sequence. Bareback fuck Kelly Lynch because it's the 80s, so we don't need condoms, right? Oh, Wrong. No. AIDS just happened. Yeah. This may be the reason why AIDS broke out it, this town. The, everybody. Jasper. This movie. There was no AIDS monkey. It was Jasper. This, <laughs> this movie is all raw dogging. Like, <laughs> everybody's raw dogging everybody. It is filthy. <laughs> Jasper, J it's I'm assuming it's Texas. It is like chlamydia herpes capital of the world. It, it starts here, goes there. They're ground zero. She's a doctor. Yeah. She's yeah. a doctor. I don't it's trust happening. I don't she's trust. 1989, yeah. She's I don't like, trust you're a bouncer in a bar. I'm sure you're safe. Put it in me raw. Who cares? <laughs> 
Well, she knows that he's safe because he carries his own medical files with him. That's and when true. she looks through it, she's like, oh, you went to NYU. Why would that be in a medical file? <laughs> He went to NYU for philosophy. She's like, well, great. I'm going to go seduce you wearing my picnic dress, which is basically like a, a, a tablecloth of a picnic. A smock. A smock. She's, oh, no. no in problem. that one, it's the picnic dress. Later, she shows up at his house to fuck, and she is wearing a smock. She's wearing some a lacy, it. weird smock that, and no underwear. And no bra. And no bra. Do you want to play the It's called scene? Easy Access for Raw Doggin'. That's yeah. Right. <laughs> And, the, and Swayze, by the way, not wearing underwear. And later you see Sam Elliott's, you see Sam Elliott's pubes also not wearing underwear. <laughs> Nobody wears Everybody's underwear in this so movie. They, they go. can't. They got to be ready yeah, or raw dog at any moment. Guys, they're raw Why? dog it is not hygienic. <laughs> it should have been called raw dog house. <laughs> <laughs> um, here is the sex scene. Um, there's no nudity, so kids don't worry about it. <laughs> this is this is uh, the sex scene. Here we go. What's he doing with his shoulders? He does so much shoulder work in this scene. Like, she goes see, for this it. This doesn't. Ah, look at his shoulders. <laughs> no underwear. And I'm in. <laughs> uh, do we no conversation about safe sex? Nope, nothing. Nothing. This is the real dirty dancing. Oh yeah. Now look here at the perspective of their body sizes in a minute. <laughs> she's she's, not, she's giant. Up. He's tiny. That, she's giant and he's tiny. Yeah. And that fireplace cannot feel good against her back. No. The worst place to have sex is up against hard brick. Uneven, jagged brick. He, he is barely as she's tall as her neck. Why is she laughing? <laughs> he just told her a good one about oh, his dick Oh, he does so much tongue her. work, too. Oh, yeah. She, then, look at how big her body is. Her torso is as big as him, him from butt to head. He's like, this is like a dance sequence. He's like just. They do dancing. dance, right? They do dance, yeah. yeah. And that's, and I, yeah, that, yeah, there All is. of his fight moves are dance moves as well. <laughs> well, it, the, the big fight scene looks like a choreographed ballet between two guys who are not fighters. I mean, Patrick Swayze is fighting a guy who looks like a bizarro, uh, like, Patrick Duffy, you know? <laughs> And uh, they just like, there's a lot of dancing, a lot of spin. Somewhere right now, Patrick Duffy's like, someone's talking about me. (laughs) I know it. I can feel it. Someone is talking (laughs) about me. Hooray. Um, All right. There, um, we talked about the, did we talk about the monster truck? Did we talk about his mock turtleneck? (laughs) Oh no. What mock turtleneck? He's wearing like the black mock turtleneck. He looks like Steve Jobs in one scene. Uh, he's Swayze? Like, he's Swayze. He's telling, it's when he's telling them the three rules, be nice, blah, blah, blah. He's wearing, a mo- he's wearing like a Steve Jobs mock turtleneck. <laughs> I half expect him to be like, but there's one more thing. <laughs> That's a Steve Jobs line, guys. He is, R. R. Way, R. 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 P. Steve Jobs. Um, the, uh, did you notice that Keith David was in this movie? Keith David has one line, which is, whiskey's running low. That's it. Main build in the credits. Yep. Fourth build person in this movie. Does he ever even help out in a fight? Nope. Because he's a huge guy. Nope. He just is a bartender. Clearly, his subplot was cut out because it would break the rule of having a black person in this movie. Yep. Uh, they did not. Like, there's only white people here. And uh, yeah, but that's, I don't know what happened. I want, to, I want someone, I hope someone has some Roadhouse trivia. What happened with Keith David's great character? Keith David is here, I think, and he's ready. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, um, there was a, there's an ADR line in there as well during the, the first kind of big fight where somebody goes, that's Dalton. He's our new cooler. <laughs> as if somebody is saying to someone else, like, no, duh. Obviously, we've got a cooler, and he's the new one. But wait, but wait. What about the whole fact that the coolers have some sort of network in which they communicate. At one point, Patrick Swayze calls up uh, Sam Elliott and he goes, oh, yeah, I heard you're working in Jasper. How? Yep. <laughs> Are they on like an internet message board? Like, 
they're getting on Prodigy posting, like, I'll be here. All right, what's going on here? There's no, they're like, they're like, they're like yeah, I heard about you. Oh, yeah, I heard about that guy. Like, how, That's what, a crazy the, scene, too, though, because after Swayze says, like, I'm having a really hard time, there's a lot going on in this town, Sam Elliott just says, uh, gotta go. <laughs> and hangs up the phone. Like Swayze There's in that no... kind of macho code is clearly calling to ask for, for help, help yeah. but can't say, I need help. And Sam Elliott doesn't, doesn't take that, doesn't pick up on it and just hangs not up on it. Not at all. <laughs> Sam Elliott appears to calling. be working at a bar that is having not a wet t-shirt contest, a wet G-string contest. Because <laughs> the We're ladies all are the already are topless. topless. <laughs> so they're just spraying down their vaginas. But they so did... that everybody can get a yeast infection. <laughs> Oh, too gross? Like a really Not. gross one, like with discharge. <laughs> okay. Like uh, fettuccine oh. Alfredo, guys. Oh, oh I'm going to do this. Boy. We're going there. It's I actually only a, getting worse. I have a clip of some, uh, of some yeast that kid infections right now. We have, uh, we have a bunch of clips of yeast infections now. We're going to show this them. This is a protective service. Ladies, clean it up! <laughs> um... I also, this is a, a small moment, but the owner, that guy, Kevin Ty, the owner of the Double Deuce, uh, at one point, you know, the bar is in great disrepair before uh, Patrick Swayze shows up, and he walks by the phone, and on the wall it says, for a great fuck call, and there's a number, and he's like, oh boy, takes out a pen. First he looks, first he <laughs> looks around to be like, is anybody looking at what I'm going to do? By the way, it's his bar, <laughs> he can do whatever he wants, and then he looks around, pulls out a pen, is there and a baby? Yeah, it is. Is there a Sorry, literal baby I, in this show? <laughs> this baby is learning everything he needs to do about life right Wait now. Wait a second. Is there a teeny tiny baby that I just said <laughs> vaginal discharge in front of? We showed that teeny tiny baby a sex scene, and we've talked about vaginal discharge. How, how old is the baby? Oh, yeah, what? now you're keeping your secrets. <laughs> must, be a pr- must be a pretty young baby if he one refuses and a half. to answer. One and a half. One and a half. One and a half, okay, that's too old. If it was a baby. tiny baby, I would that like to hold the baby. baby doesn't even know how old it is. <laughs> if you brought a tiny baby, please bring it up here. I would like to hold it for the rest of the show. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm only going to say more horrible things, and it's only going to be funnier if I'm holding a baby. <laughs> bring, bring us your baby. <laughs> Andrew Dice Clay held the baby for the last six years of his act, just, yep. uh, uh, doing those nursery rhymes. Uh, so he sees this thing for a great fuck call, looks around and changes it to Buick. Like he makes the F into a B, adds an I, and then changes the K into an H. Or no, no. Yeah, well, I don't know how you spell Buick. No, doesn't. Hey, hey, sorry, guys. Wait, sorry. Wait, wait sorry. <laughs> For a Wait, second, no, it doesn't change the K. <laughs> Buick is right. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why there isn't a hilarious scene where one of those, you know, dirt bags that works at the bar that probably wrote that answers his phone and goes, for the 40th time, yeah. I don't have a Buick. <laughs> and slams uh, down his phone. That would be amazing. <laughs> it's Keith David's home yeah, phone number. That was line. his old plot line. <laughs> no, that's it's the, not a that's Buick. the excised story. <laughs> Oh man, uh, uh, I have a I have a couple clips. I didn't know uh, if just so you guys get a sense of the villain that Patrick Swayze has to fight. Um, I, I I want baby, that baby. Do you like this baby? Give uh, me your baby. You brought this, it, offer it as a sacrifice. This is um, this is how tough Ben Gazzara is beating up his gang. All right, so here we go. Sorry. You disgust me, O'Connor. You want to know why you disgust me? No, why, boss? Because oh. you're a bleeder. You bleed too much. You are a messy bleeder. <laughs> Lots of dick punches in this movie. You got no endurance for pain. Your balls in the back of your neck bleed too much. <laughs> ah, come on. Check out that yeah. monster truck in the back. Yeah, you'll be fine. Come on. Look, at, just, look at his boots. Well, help him up. Watch this. You're going to be fine. And you know why? Because I like you. <laughs> then, by the way, they're casually driving that monster truck in that scene. But they just pull up to the house in a monster truck. There is a scene later in the movie where um, Patrick Swayze finishes work for the night. 
comes out to the parking lot. There's no cars there, but Kelly Lynch is standing there provocatively next to her Jeep. And they get in her Jeep and they drive away. And the two dudes have been spying on them in the parking lot in a monster truck. (laughs) That's correct. It is as if he like walks out the door there is a jeep and a hot girl and there's a monster truck over giant there, that giant monster truck which he ignores and is just like well here's my girl i guess i'm gonna raw dog her for a little while <laughs> and then the bad guys are like hey, 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 hey we got you now like if you're gonna stake someone out don't do it in like the biggest in like a, a, a truck that is a sto- a two-story truck <laughs> That, but they were that nah, that monster truck is amazing. The monster truck comes into play later on when Ben Gazzara starts oh. treating the, the the town gets behind Dalton obviously because Patrick Swayze is the best. And then he's like, I got to teach him a lesson. So he blows up uh, an auto parts store and then he just lets a monster truck drive through the showroom of a car dealership yes. and destroy every one of the cars. There is Which there is no just, law. Yeah, but in just in terms of his business plan too, like he wants more money from these establishments. He's destroying all of them. Yeah. Like there's no well, He wants everybody to stay in line. He's like you got to you got to pay me my money and you got to stay in line because right, he but destroys he the He blows up the auto parts and, place. And oh, oh it, there are explosions in this Left movie and right. that are so big that they could they literally are like it'll be like <laughs> like a little bit of an explosion and it'll be like oh no, no, everything's okay oh no, no Red's auto shop is on fire and then the place will blow up like Hiroshima <laughs> like it will be an enormous explosion and normally these are just like wood cabin kind of places that they're blowing up that they would not have this much expl- like, you wouldn't need that much to blow up these places yeah. but they are blo- like they are every place is a gas factory and it's like <laughs> Um, even there's Mer- even uh, at the end when uh, Patrick Swayze lets his Mercedes loose, that blows up like a, a crazy thing too. Ignites on fire. Um, Lonnie Anderson's Lon- I call her like Bobo Lonnie Anderson, oh, which is Ben uh, Gazzara's Lonnie. girlfriend. Yeah. Oh, she gets a classic '80s movie treatment in that she she gets out of line, so she gets beat up a little. Just oh. a little. But by the this way, when, she's, when, when Patrick like... Swayze walks into his home and sees her there and sees that like she's his girl, she's doing a workout. Gazara's girl. Gazara's girl. She's doing um, like an 80s workout and has clearly has a black eye, but instead of turning her face, she continues to look at Patrick Swayze and just covers one eye. <laughs> don't see it. You, you don't, don't see, see it if it I like it. <laughs> it's covered. I feel like this is an era when it was like, Oh no, we gotta tell people it's not cool to hit ladies. <laughs> because up until then, apparently it was. I feel like people were just like, punching ladies is cool. Well, but I mean, Patrick that Swayze, scene. he's gonna step, step up and well, be like, Well, and that's uh-uh. why, too, though, that's why Kelly, what's her face, is a doctor in the movie. Because it's oh, yeah. also like late 80s, early 90s counterpoint to all these. Yes. Weird. Like hoochies running around. <laughs> that that Give baby me agrees. Your baby. I want that baby. I'm coming um, to get you it. You gotta soon. cord this mic. Why don't you just go stand near it? I'm gonna come, I'm gonna find that baby, you <laughs> oh, guys. God. But the the beat up girlfriend of Ben Gazzara also does like a strip tease in the middle of the movie to reveal the biggest granny panties of all time. <laughs> They're so crazy. They're granny panty thongs, which is the wildest combination <laughs> I ever. So did wide see. back, and then it gets real narrow at the bottom, yeah. right? Yeah, they're like white cotton pants. It's, it's, un, it's unsettling how, uh, especially because you know thongs exist because we've seen it earlier G-string at the wet G string contest. So she should, first of all, she's the only person in this movie that I'm convinced wears underwear. <laughs> she is. Yeah. That is for sure true. If you're going <laughs> to well, wear underwear, guy, make it provocative. Her and the guy in tidy yeah. whiteies. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's yeah. You see him pull where, those You up. only can wear underwear if it's weird. <laughs> Wait a second. Maybe only the bad guys in this movie wear underwear. That's what <laughs> That's delineates them. Bad guys wear underwear. Good guys just Well, here's the off. thing, though, because both her and the guy who pulls up his tidy whities are wearing white underwear, which would tell me they're good guys. But that's the thing. You don't have to be white because Patrick Swayze's kind of... You know, he's, he's got a dark side. But yeah. when we see Patrick Swayze, when when um, what's her name comes to bring him breakfast, he we see his bare butt, and she basically comes when she sees it. Oh god! He like gets out of bed, and you see his butt, and she's like, Ugh, but, uh, <laughs> uh, like she like full blown comes, and then right, he's baby? like, hey, here's some coffee, <laughs> and he puts jeans on, no underwear. 
I, uh, I was very excited that the final fight scene where Patrick Swayze has to fight, like the main uh, bad guy's henchman, uh, he was fighting a denim on top, denim on bottom bad guy, yep. which is top. denim shirt, <laughs> denim pants. Denim on bottom. <laughs> <laughs> he, um, I wanted to show, this is just a classic, a classic scene. Everyone knows so her, has good. heard about the throat rip, um, but there's a little moment before that that's worthy of, uh, of showing. Here we go. Take a look. This is the big final fight. I used to fuck guys like you in prison. Uh, what? What? Little gun, baby gun. I'm gonna kill you the old fashioned way. You would think that ripping out his throat, he wouldn't need a finishing move. She's checking out. Already Alice. dead. Is the throat out? Yeah, the throat's out. This guy's gone. Throat's gone. Already dead. <laughs> the he throat kicked him into rip. the water so that he would bleed out in the water. It would take him mess. minutes Not on the beach. to die. It would take him minutes to die. She could have saved him. <laughs> She's a doctor. Keep a in throat mind, rip that is... character is a doctor. I do like that the throat rip is his signature move. <laughs> like, Earlier it... in the movie, somebody's like, I heard he killed a guy. He ripped his throat out. Well, you knew that was coming later when they set that up in the first five minutes. We got to see the throat rip, but that's a crazy, brutal move. And then he almost rips Gazara's throat out. Yeah, he stares at his hand. Ah, he gets ready he's to like, go. <laughs> I want to do this. Should we? Uh, we uh, let's have the house. That throat looks so good. We can open up the uh, that, to some questions. If you guys have any questions about things that we haven't talked about, we 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 still have to talk about the grizzly bear. Uh, oh, we yeah. should, uh, oh. Well, you should ask the baby first. Baby questions. We also need to talk about questions. If you raise the, your hand if you have a question. Uh, I wanted to know if you could talk about the irony of uh, Patrick Swayze always. You know, talking about how important it is to be nice to everybody, and just you know, just he says that many times in the movie, and then just beats the shit out of everybody. Yeah, that's true. That's true. He never doesn't get into a fight. The three rules that he has is always be nice. Yeah, and well, that's one of the three. That's the most important one, and he is—he's the most violent dude in the entire town. <laughs> he has like he's capable of like Wolverine level blind rage. Yes. <laughs> Where is that baby? We've got we've got baby Wolverine. Now that the, the lights are on, I'm gonna find you, baby. <laughs> Don't you worry, baby. I'm looking for you. I'm coming for you, baby. Wherever you are. Where is that baby? Where is this baby? Where Baby's is over it? Here. Where is your Baby's baby? Right over here. Where it's over is here. this baby? Right here. Baby on the aisle. Give me your so baby. Scared. We're going over. I see you, baby. Very cute I'm so baby. Scared. I see Very you, baby. baby. Oh my god, what a cute ass. baby. <laughs> Don't oh ever god. date Ben Gazera when you get older. Do they ever explain how he got the skills to beat the shit out of everybody? Was there ever a backstory? There's no backstory, well, he's, right? He's, he seems he's never to be, not been a cooler. He seems to be Sam Elliott's protege, right? So but Sam there was Elliott, a moment. There was a moment though where he was studying philosophy at NYU and then became the most badass guy in the world. Yeah, he doesn't have a kind of like backstory that involves like he was in the military or he was blah, blah, blah. He really just, Sam Elliott, the thing we haven't talked about is Sam Elliott comes in like three quarters of the way through the movie. And as far as I'm concerned, the true love story in this movie is Swayze and Sam Elliott. Yeah, Because man. they hug and caress each other to a degree that is shocking. And by the way, you know when Sam Elliott's about to throw down because he pulls his hair back in a scrunchie. Yeah, yeah. Also, um, the most awkward scene is basically, you know, so uh, what Patrick Swayze's kind of into this girl. They've slept together. And then uh, he introduces him to Sam Elliott. And Sam Elliott kind of starts trying to take her oh, away weird. from Patrick Swayze. They have like a very sexy dance. Oh, uh, yeah. He says something like, as she's, as she's walking away, he says... A woman shouldn't be that she's got, smart. No, no, he says she's smart. got too much brains to have that good of an ass. Yeah. Wait, yes, but she's wearing a very blousy, poofy pleated skirt. There's yeah. just no way he could know that. She's wearing, she is a doctor's salary. She should get a much better outfits. Especially and she's been, by the way, she's been up all night and is going in to start her shift. Yeah, yeah. she goes in to I take don't a need. quick nap. Guess what I don't need on somebody who's about to perform surgery on me? Yeah. That they've been raging all night with maniacs. <laughs> All right, what's your question? All right, what's the better line? Polar bear fell on me or pain don't hurt? Ooh. This guy is a fan. <laughs> or he wrote the movie. Well, 
I will, I will have to play this polar bear. I, my vote is the polar bear. Because when else can you say a polar bear fell on me? And by the way, it's also an amazing button to a crazy scene. This is the scene where, do you have, what do you, do you have the whole I have, scene? I just have the polar bear scene. Oh, okay. um, but you'll see what we're talking about. Here we Dalton go. is loose in the uh, mansion, and this everybody's the, all the bad guys are looking for him. And here is what happened. And this is the fattest, dumbest one. <laughs> He doesn't like a- scary animals. <laughs> yeah, He's like, I feel like dead. my character would have tape on a couple of his fingers. All right. Because maybe he got hurt or something. <laughs> Gazara. I may not have cued this up perfectly. Here we go. Oh, here we go. I think he did get his fingers smashed earlier in the movie. Wait. Guys, that is not Dom DeLuise. Made for each other. Then Patrick Swayze goes, you guys are made for each other. Again, an insult that doesn't really yeah. pay off. It's like, does anybody, I guess? Does anybody in fear make that? <laughs> does, has anybody ever made that noise? Well, that's a crazy moment, too, because... Okay, so he says, I hate this place, acknowledging that there are a lot of animals who are dead here and stuff. So in that moment where he's shooting the polar bear, does he, he genuinely thinks that polar bear's real? I'm asking this genuinely, you guys. This is not <laughs> gonna, a bit. I'm let's, asking, let's, let's do dig you into think this. he thinks there's a polar bear coming at me? I do believe because that because the there is a polar the way, bear coming there at him. There is, but Why couldn't he just stuck. do this? Yeah. <laughs> Move to the left. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Why is he, he shooting has, him? He has three options. Stay completely still. Move to the right, move to the left. He could have done either, and he stood still. Stood still, and, and then fired. And shoots at him. And then there's a scene later on where he decides to, because he does survive this, he's not killed by the fake polar bear. Spoiler alert. Spo- yeah. Huge spoiler alert. And then to, later to, on... To, so that he can have a spinoff, we hope. Fingers crossed. And then later on, when he decides to join the good guys, he looks at the stuffed monkeys for a long time. Well, the stuffed monkeys are in the position of see no evil, hear no evil. Did you see that? that. I didn't realize that. It was yeah, because the set. sheriff comes I'm and says, set. what happened here? By the way, the first time you see the cops is after Ben Gazzara is murder, like brutally murdered in his own house. Probably the only time not in public per, a person is killed. This is what happens. Like, it's the end of the movie, and Patrick Swayze, uh, 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 Ben Gazzara has Patrick Swayze dead to rights with a gun. I have it. I, have play, I can play it, right? Oh, here you can. can. Yeah, okay. here we go. It's over! <laughs> These are the townsfolk whose businesses he's been ruining. That guy's weird. The guy is still stuck behind the polar bear. You'll see him in a second. Polar bear. This is our town, and don't you forget it. (laughs) What? (laughs) Still stuck. That was it. And then basically the so, cops come in. So then the cops come in and say, what happens here? And all the townspeople are like, and it's intense, right? Because they yeah. all just murdered him in cold blood. And everybody says, I didn't see anything. I didn't see anything. And then trapped under polar bear goes, I was trapped under a pale. A polar bear fell on me. <laughs> and everybody goes, ha, 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 ha. Everybody a dead man. They are, <laughs> they are murderers. They are murderers. But did they call the cops? No. Who called that, them? I, that's, I, I don't know, but this is also the first time the cops have shown up to anything. Yeah. And they come in force. The sheriff Well, the police, I mean, the fire department did show up when Red's auto shop blew up. Yes, they came. That was the only time you saw any federal involvement in this town. Um, any other, any other right questions? Here. Yeah, okay, this question over here. So one of the bouncers didn't look like they were letting in underage Patrons yes. in the bar, and wasn't that the same guy that was like caught like having sex? Well, that's the girl. He so, lets yeah. in the girl with yeah. a Sears card. He says, "This is a Sears card." 
And then they, they, he lets him in, and then he plows her in the storage. Sure. Yeah, and she's probably like, she's, I mean, under 18. She's probably and 16 he years is old. not wearing a condom. No. Guys, it doesn't, ma- it doesn't matter. When you're under 18, you can't get any diseases. It's not, that's, that's true. right. Because that the female true. body has a way of shutting that down. That's yeah. true. It, that is true. I mean, it's been getting a lot of attention lately. Right, it's guys? right there, yeah. That's what I've heard. It's yeah, called, it's totally cool. It's, it's called totally legitimating. Cool. Yeah. She can't get pregnant. Let's see. Uh, let's, I'm going to go around. Right. Yeah, what's your question? If this movie was remade today, who would replace Patrick Swayze? Ooh, good Ooh, question. Such a good question. Wow. Let's, like, guys, let's all fucking think about this for a second. <laughs> who could replace Patrick Swayze? I don't have to think about it for very long. Statham is pretty good, but a little on the nose. Liam Neeson would be the Sam Elliott character. Liam yeah, Liam Neeson. Yeah, you're right. He, would be well, he, Sam he's, he could play Patrick Swayze's dad, Liam Neeson. Zach, 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 Zach Efron. Efron. <laughs> Zach Efron. Really? Shame on you. Shame on you. Zach it's, Efron. Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. It's not a Nicholas I got it. Sparks novel lady. I got lady. it. Channing Tatum. Channing Tatum, yeah. yeah. Channing Tatum. Yeah. Channing Tatum, that. Liam Neeson. Let's do this. Guys. <laughs> Holy shit. That's a fucking home run movie. I would see that movie in a heartbeat. Remake yeah, that. Get Joe Carnahan to direct it. The guy, yeah. the guy and then the, who would be Ben Gazzara? The gray. And there's a wolf. Just cuz. <laughs> Um, There's a question here. Oh, wait. Clint Eastwood should be Ben Gazzara. <laughs> oh. Um, it always comes to this time where, obviously, we had an opinion about this movie that it's awesome, and, uh, and other people also agree. Uh, these are reviews that were culled from Amazon. It's time for a second opinion. These are second opinions from top to bottom. Crazy movies are fun. These are great reviews, five-star reviews on Amazon about Roadhouse. Here it goes. This is the greatest movie I own. It has everything you could ever want. Fighting, boozing, strippers, blowed up buildings, and a monster truck. (laughs) Plus, there's a character who gets his throat ripped out by a sweaty Patrick Swayze. Five stars. (laughs) That criteria is never matched in any other movie. If those are the only things that he wants, not that not looking up. This one is a great one. It sneaks up on you like an STD, and you, and you don't Literally. know you have it until you really have it. From Swayze's peacock mullet to his grease-up body doing slow-mo kung fu moves, this movie is art for artists. Um, I, I, then these are just like little, little ones that I liked in here too. Make no mistake about it. This is about violence, not dancing or romance. Some scenes are, all caps, very sexy. <laughs> Especially in the back of the bar when they're on break. He spells break B-R-A-K-E. If you know what I mean. Um, Okay. Sharp Marble writes, a classic classic guys movie that has parts for gals, too. (laughs) June, did it have parts for gals? It had a few parts for gals. I also thought thought it was really weird that Patrick Swayze falls in love with Kelly Lynch's character, whose name is Elizabeth, but only calls her Doc for the whole movie. Yeah. So he's like, listen, Doc, you gotta get out of here. Like, what? Did anyone else notice too when we're first introduced to her she has on glasses and her hair's like pulled back in a French braid when she goes out on her first date with Swayze she styles her hair in like Swayze bangs yep did you, you notice that? And she never wears her glasses ever never again. Wears, and they were amazing. I thought that was her best look. Oh, absolutely. Well, They're she's like got to wear Jesse. those glasses to show everybody at work that she's really smart. Super smart. Yeah. I People believe don't, that. I mean, look at that. She works on an x-ray machine that I've never seen before, too. Like an automated x-ray. She's like, oh, she's in there doing x-rays. I don't know what she's looking at, but she's looking at a ton of x-rays. A it's, ton of x-rays at once. Yeah. Just like all just, the... It's almost like a rotating thing of x-rays. Oh, I got to examine all these people's x-rays all together. Um, 
All right, so I think we covered everything. This is the Mount Everest of, uh, of bad movies. It's not a bad movie. It's a great movie executed amazingly. Oh, this movie, we do movies that I would never recommend people watch, The Last Airbender. Um, <laughs> and this is one everybody should leave currently and watch immediately. This goes up in the pantheon of like Fast Five, Crank 2, and Roadhouse. They are the must-owns of the How Did This Get Made collection. Uh, they are amazing. So that brings us to the end of our first live episode from Bumbershoot. And Jason Manzukis is still not on Twitter, but I am at Paul Shear. June is at June Diane Raphael. Uh, make a comment. Put it on our iTunes page. We love it. And uh, continue to send us cool shit. We got a bunch of neat fan art. Uh, we appreciate it all. All right. See you next week. Bye-bye. How did this get made?